Hello, and welcome to the Movie Universe. I'm your host, Movie Fiend. Today, as promised, I'm going to show you how I made my Megazord costume. As I said in my previous video, this was such a huge project that I had to make this video into parts. As always, you want to start from the ground up. So for this part, I'm going to show you how I made one of the legs, or specifically, the Triceratops. First, you'll want to cut yourself some big pieces of cardboard. Of course, you'll want to make it big enough to cover the sides of your leg, as well as the front and back. You'll also need to make a bottom piece that you can put your foot on, and of course you'll want to cut a piece that goes from the top of the ankle all the way down to the toe, and of course cut triangles for the sides to fill it in. When you're done with that, you should have a leg that looks something like this. Repeat the process one more time so you can be ready to do the saber-toothed tiger next. I know, it doesn't look anything like Triceratops. If anything, it looks like one of the Transformers. But that's okay, because this will be your basic template for when you put the details in. But I will tell you this ahead of time. You're going to end up cutting away a few pieces, that way it'll look right in the end. So don't go crazy with the duct tape just yet. After you got these legs all made up, grab an old pair of slip-on shoes and some Gorilla Super Glue. Cover the bottom of the soles of your shoes with the glue and press it right into the leg, right where your foot's going to go. Now, I know a lot of people are going to tell me that I should have done this before I attached the bottom of the foot to the leg, but I wasn't sure how well my foot was going to fit in there, especially considering that some things were probably going to be cut off later. And I don't know what it is, but I always have the hardest time finding dead center in anything. So this was the only way I could do it. So for people who have problems figuring that kind of thing out, this will work for you. But if you can figure that out beforehand, more power to you. Once you got the shoes in, place something really heavy on them and leave it alone for a couple of days. That way you can be sure the glue has fully set. After those days are up, give it a try. That way you can be sure that the glue is fully set and so you can make sure that the height is right where you want it on the legs. Now there's a chance you might have to lop a little off the top, but again, that's okay. It's best to do it now than later on when you've got so much detail on there that you're going to ruin it. After all, you're going to walk in this, right? It's best to get it at the right height, that way you won't have any trouble walking later on. Okay, now for the details. First, we're going to make the tank treads that go on the back of the Triceratops. How we do this is we get two long, wide pieces of cardboard. Grab your utility knife and score it down the center, but don't cut it all the way through. Once you do that, bend it over and duct tape the other side shut. Next, find the center of both pieces of cardboard and cut it. When you're done, you'll have four tank treads. Now take the four pieces and line them up just where you need them on the back of the leg. Once you get them right where you want them, put some Gorilla Glue on the treads and put them in place. Then cover them with black duct tape. Make sure the duct tape goes over the tank treads and onto the back of the leg. And then cover the back of the leg with blue duct tape. Next, we're going to work on those side pieces that you find on the Triceratops. Grab some square pieces of cardboard and just cut a tapered end off it. For this, we have to do it two different ways because two of the tapered ends that are closer to the bottom of the foot are long and narrow than the ones on the back. They're more blunt and square. Anyway, taper them to just the way you want them and repeat this process four more times for each because what you need to do next is get all the tapered ends and double them up. This way it'll stand out more. Once you got them doubled up, cover one side of it, including the edges with blue duct tape. Be sure to only cover the side that you want to be seen because on the other side, we're going to leave that bare. That way we can glue it to the leg later and we're going to need that cardboard for the glue to stick to. But we're not going to do that just yet. So put them aside and we'll work on the next part, the foot. Grab a ruler or carpenter square and find the center of the foot. When you do, draw a big line showing right where the center is. Next, draw two diagonal lines going from the top of the foot, pointing all the way down to the bottom of the toe. I would recommend you draw another pair of diagonal lines going just about an inch away from the center, because it might be a little too narrow for your foot. I discovered that it would be, so that's what I did. After that, cut out the top diagonal pieces and cut off the sides. After you do that, use the side that you cut off to draw yourself a line on the bottom of the foot. Cut it off. Grab two pieces of cardboard and cut them into shape. These will be the new sides of the foot. Once you got it into place, duct tape the foot and the sides of the leg with blue duct tape. Next, grab your Gorilla Super Glue and your tapered end pieces and glue them into place. Now, you won't be able to do all four pieces in one night. You'll have to do two at a time. I recommend that you get them into place, lay it down on your workbench. Of course, you want to make sure that your side pieces are on the bench. Meanwhile, you have the other side sticking up. When you do that, put something really heavy on the inside right where the tapered ends are. Leave it alone for a day or two and repeat the process on the other side. Next, grab yourself a piece of craft foam and measure it right on the top where your foot's going to go in. 
Cut it to size, then cut a hole big enough for your light to go in, and cover it with blue duct tape. After that, glue the craft foam to the edges of the top of your leg, and for extra security, put some more blue duct tape on the edges. That way it'll hold better. Okay, now we're going to work on the head of the Triceratops. What you need to do is grab yourself a good piece of cardboard and roll it up like a map. Of course, when you roll it up, you want to roll it with the perforations, not against them, or else it won't roll up right. If you don't know what the heck I'm talking about, just take a good look at the picture and you'll see what I mean. After you roll it up, cut one side into a narrow tip. Place it on the top of the foot. You may have to trim it here and there to get it just right. The idea is you want the bottom edge of the points to go flush with the bottom of the foot. As you can see here, I used packaging tape to tape it down temporarily. Now, I did this for two reasons. The first, I wanted to make sure that it's set right on the top of the foot. And the second reason was so I could measure and cut the proper length for the Triceratops shield. I was satisfied with how this sat on the foot, so next I went to the shield. All you have to do for that is get a piece of cardboard that's a little shorter than what you started with for the head. Grab some packaging tape and tape it on there to see that you got it just right. When you get the angle right on there, round off the edges. Of course, when you're done with that, you might not be satisfied with how the shield sits on top of the head, so you might have to make a few adjustments like I did just here. Once you get it right where you want it, grab some blue and white duct tape and cover it. Now we need to make the frills at the end of the shield. Grab some more cardboard and cut them into these diagonal-like shapes. You'll need six of them. You'll also need a small rectangle shape as well. Place them around the Triceratops shield on your workbench just so you can get the measurements right as to where you want them. Because don't forget, there's got to be a frill, a gap, and a frill and another gap. When you're satisfied with how they sit, cover them with white duct tape and tape them to the edge of the Triceratops shield. Be sure to use blue duct tape on the front. It should look something like this. When you got them on there, use a thin layer of white duct tape to cover between the gaps of the frills and the shield. It should look like this when you're done. After that, duct tape the head to the top of the foot. You don't have to duct tape the frills to the leg. All you need to do is get some blue duct tape and tape the bottom edge to the foot. Next, we're going to work on the nose horn, and this is really quite simple. Grab four small squares of cardboard and cut them all into triangles. Next, tape them all together to form a small pyramid. Cut two little grooves on the front and back of the pyramid. That way it'll sit properly on the nose. Put the pyramid right where you want it and use white duct tape to hold it in place. Then finish it off with blue duct tape. And there you have your nose horn. Next, we're going to work on the eyes. And how you do it is really quite simple. Pull out two pieces of red duct tape and place them on a smooth surface. I happen to have a thing of plexiglass left over from an earlier project. Either way, you're going to have to get something with a smooth surface that you won't have to worry about cutting into. Anyway, put down two pieces of red duct tape, then cover them with white duct tape. Grab your pencil and draw an eye. And with your utility knife, just barely cut through the white duct tape and pull it off. Then draw a bigger part around the eye and cut it off. Peel your eyepieces off the plastic and place them just where you want them on the Triceratops head. Now we're going to make that trident symbol that sits on the white part of the shield. Grab yourself a piece of paper, draw it, and cut it out. Grab one or two pieces of duct tape, depending on how big your piece of paper is. Trace it, cut it, and place it on the shield. Next, grab yourself four styrofoam tubes, two long ones and two short ones. I had these things left over for some years, so you may have to use cardboard and roll it up. Cut them to the length you want, grab your long pieces, and taper them at one end. Cut a notch in the center and bend it over. Use a big strip of silver duct tape to hold it in place, and then cover it completely. Cut some small strips of blue duct tape and use them to attach it to the head. Be sure to cover every square inch. After that, cover the end of the horns with silver duct tape. That way it looks right. You don't have to go too far, just all the way to where you wrapped it around. Next, grab your short pieces of styrofoam and cover them with silver duct tape. Now you'll want the cannon pieces to sit between the frill, so set them like this. That way you can determine where you want the tail to go. Next, you'll want to get some small pieces of cardboard and make a small rectangular box. Fortunately for me, I ordered a small object not too long ago, so I had the right box for the job. Next, grab some more cardboard and make a small square box. Of course, you'll want it to be a little bigger than the rectangular box itself. Something like this. After you get your boxes made up, cover them both with gray duct tape. 
Next, cut a square piece of black duct tape and a smaller piece of red duct tape. Put the red duct tape on top of the black duct tape and then transfer it onto the box. Then when you're done, grab some Gorilla Super Glue and glue them into place. Next, grab two small rectangular pieces of cardboard and your round protractor. Use the protractor to draw this shape and cut it out. Repeat the process three more times. Next, draw and cut out four rectangular pieces. Two are going to go on the inside. They'll lay flat against the square box. The other two, roll them up with a pencil. This will be your outside edge. Put them in place and cover them with blue duct tape. Then cut four long strips of black duct tape. Two of them you're going to want to thin down a little. Place the thinner strips here and the whiter strips here. Then grab your styrofoam cannons and glue them into place. Cut out two more strips of black duct tape and place it on the tail. They should be roughly between the cannons and the top box. At the same time, grab those two pieces we made earlier and glue them on either side of the top box. Next, grab four strips of black duct tape and four strips of white duct tape. Put the white duct tape over the black duct tape and cut out some intricate designs. Then peel the whole thing off and stick it right on the side pieces. And there you have the Triceratops. But of course, we've only just begun. Stay tuned because real soon we're going to build the Sabertooth Tiger. But until then, this is Movie Fan signing off.